Greetings from the Mini Machine Shop. I'm Dave. I just wanted to do a quick little video. I had a thought about what I went through when I very first started with the end mill and what I've learned. So I wanted to give a heads up on uh, conventional milling, climb milling, and center cutting end mills and so on. This is primarily for the newbie. Maybe one of the more experienced guys, it'll hit a nerve or something that they never thought about. So here we go. All right, I wanted to shoot this quick little video, mainly for newbies, because um, I've got a lot of subscribers that are telling me, you know, they just got a mill and they're learning how to do things. And I wanted to show the difference between conventional milling and climb milling before somebody gets hurt or um, mill gets damaged. And I got to laugh too. There's some of the newbies. One of them made a um, observation watching my videos and yes you're absolutely correct if you buy a mill you need to buy a lathe to fix the mill <laughs> if you buy a lathe you better buy a mill so you can fix the lathe so it's absolutely correct alright most uh, I think all probably mills turn in this direction if you're looking down clockwise direction conventional milling is when your spinning in this direction and you're going you're cutting in this direction and the reason for it is all tables have backlash so there's play so if you say your table is pushed that way so the play is over on this side if you're doing conventional milling and the cutter is going this way and it hits the part what's going to happen is it's going to push the table away from the cutter you're not going to dig in deep uh, at all. So conventional milling is done when you need to do really deep, deep cuts. And the only unfortunate thing is it does leave a very ugly finish. <laughs> pretty terrible looking. Actually, it's pretty good for this cutter. Usually there's um, chips just stuck all over the face of this thing. Where's the chip brush? Clean that up. Alright, so that's conventional milling and you want to use that when you're going to make really deep cuts. And the reason is, suppose you're going to go the other way. That's called climb milling. Now, if your table again is pushed that way, and it's capable of coming back if you try to do a deep cut with climb milling what happens is the second the cutter hits the surface it pulls the table into the cutter thus making a deeper cut and what winds up happening and I've done it before until I figured this out is the part comes flying out of the vise or your motor stalls or your cutter I mean, you just rip things up it just becomes terrible um, and the bad part about it is even though this is a grizzly end mill, it's got a huge nut on the back to lock down the tram, the force when it grabs like that is so great that it blows the tram, your tables, your head's tilted now, and the force is so great that it uh, wreaks havoc with X and Y gib screws. Is what happens is when it slams on, on the gib screw, it flattens out the tip of them. So now your table's got slop in it, and you got to spend a few hours trying to redo the tram and trying to clean up the gib screws to get the play um, out of the gibs again. But let me do a little a climb milling with this guy. If you 
see, yes, it's a pretty nice finish. Now, um, I'm surprised. The reason I'm surprised is this is a new cutter. I had a um, half inch cutter that I used strictly on aluminum. And when I was making that tailstock mod, that little aluminum piece, I was coming down doing a surface cut and I was looking at the finish going, something's wrong, it just didn't look right. And I looked at the end of the cutter. Where's another one? Here it is. I looked at the end of the cutter and I noticed there's big chunks missing out of it. So I don't understand high speed steel only on aluminum and the cutter's falling apart. So I went on Amazon and this was a, ch a cheap one, a six dollar one. Um, and it's getting me better cuts than the one I had that was damaged. So it's actually not too bad. Um, but at the same time when I bought that, this is a 60 degree fluke. For $10 there was a Grizzly, put it that way I guess. For $10 there was a Grizzly with a 30 degree fluke. And I had this in here earlier and I was getting really, really nice finishes. Uh, doing climb cutting and even better uh, conventional cutting so you might want to look this up the other thought was when I was playing with this grizzly one I was thinking well gee wow now that I've got the collet set I was limited before to a half inch um, because of the chuck now that I've got the collet set I can go almost up to an inch so for curtains and giggles, I just ordered off of Amazon a three-quarter uh, grizzly cutter. It wasn't that much. I think it was fourteen dollars. So I'm really curious to see what it does. But this thirty degree, this is giving it gives a really a best finish I've seen yet. Um, doing climb cutting and uh, conventional cutting. So yeah, one of the other things that was hilarious is because I was limited to. Um, half inch because of the chuck. I had to try to find arbors to do things like that that were half inch. So now the limitations are pretty much so gone. Um, next video I think I'm just going to, I haven't played with this guy yet, so I think I'm going to do some boring and experimenting and see what happens with it. So that concludes this video. I hope somebody learned something before a tragic happened. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, where I got in trouble is when I was trying to cut... Wait! <laughs> oh, he's dropping stuff. Uh, I was trying to cut something like this. And I would clamp it in the vise and I was going uh, across it like that. And it's just not enough support. And so if you're doing climb milling, it, it will come out. And that's when I've really had parts just get massively damaged. So if you're doing something like that, put it in the vise, but mill this way. That way you've got more support and your part won't get grabbed. And one last note. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out what center cutting was. Um, as you go and you look on Amazon or other websites and they say non-center cutting, or they don't say anything at all, or they say center cutting. What it means is if you plunge down vertically in like your uh, drill bit, if you're center cutting, you can see if on the very right, that cutter is center cutting. It will clear out all the material. The next the two on the left, you can see obviously there is a hole in the middle, so it will not clear out the material in the middle if you're trying to plunge straight down. So center cutting is the one on the right, non-center cutting are the two left um, end mills. So hope that helps somebody.